Okay, so this video is Lucy playing fetch. The main thing I'm focusing on here is getting some control around fetch. I want her to have that outlet, but she gets very intense. She'll fight with other dogs over the toy and she needs to really be slowed down and held accountable for when she's able to get the ball and when she has to wait. This is crucial for all dogs. Fetch is basically practicing hunting. And if you're just throwing the ball over and over again, building competition, building drive, you can condition your dog to stay in an overstimulated state throughout other parts of the day as well. No impulse control. The whole point of fetch is to teach your dog how to get control around their hunting or herding dog skills. Now, I'm not asking for the world here from Lucy. We've only been at this a few days for short periods of time. So I'm just asking for just enough to challenge her and to slow her down and she'll get better and better as we go. Also real quick, it's really crucial you always do something to bring your dog down after fetch. It's so important that they get that slow and controlled work or with Lucy, I'm able to do it pretty quickly after just a few times. She's a little older. It was a little easier to just tell her to chill out for a while and relax with your dog where you played fetch before you move to the next thing. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, stop it with my foot, which is easier than chasing it around. Have her settle first and then I reach for it. She has to settle again because she's not used to it. She really struggled with this. So what I keep saying is like sit her down, which she listens for a half a second. Notice I don't go to the next step till I get my sit or my down, <laughs> but she still keeps popping up. So this next time I switch it up, I just say no. I also went ahead and reached for it with my hand. That was another change. Yeah. See how much better that went? Okay. Was it 17? Even though I did it with my feet first, had her settle, then reached for it, that went much better. Just play around, take your time. A no at a little bit more of a valuable level to stop her brain in forward motion was what she needed. Place. Now we're just switching it up, we're using place. I'm really playing around here. I'm trying to find um, what's hard for her, what's easy for her so I can mix in difficult and easy. It's super important. Place. Also, I cannot stress this enough. Do not throw the toy when the dog is staring at the toy. I don't care if you're waiting five minutes. You wait till that dog looks at nope. you. Twice. Now here, she either had a mental block or no, um, she's just ignoring me. The mental block can come from a lot of arousal. Dogs aren't used to working with so much arousal. Place became harder and harder as we practiced it. Yeah. So if that's you, make sure your dog is dragging a leash so, so you can guide them on. Because if they know place really well, but one valuable correction, like they, they're not getting it, they're just laying down, you need to be able to guide them. Down. Now she's nowhere near me being able to throw it and waiting for permission to go get it. But we can do some proofing and place is the best way to start that. Make sure you can toss the toy, squeak the toy if it squeaks. Yeah. Um, if your dog is kind of crazy, don't use squeaker toys unless you're just practicing impulse control. But anyway, yeah. you need to do some proofing. Down was too much for her right here. And so even though she got up, you know, it was it was fine. I went ahead and said break and throw it. You got to choose your battles. Don't Don't make it too hard, but just make sure you don't make it easy forever. And that's really the biggest thing I, I see. Don't ask for too much when things are too difficult. Mix in some easier reps, but also, you know, don't forget to challenge them. Most dogs don't need to build drive. They need to build focus. And so take your time. Look how long I took. I actually edited some of it out before I picked up the ball and she didn't even get up. So really take a breath between each step in this um, sequence. And make sure you're mixing it up with heel, let's go work, eventually recalling your dog from tossing the ball, all those things. I wanted to show this real quick. 
the lazy way of playing fetch. <laughs> when I would kick the ball, she would start to bark really intensely. The slower I went, used my hand, used obedience, took a breath between each step, just said no for any forward motion brain to grab it when she wasn't supposed to, barking went away. If you play fetch this way, you're feeding the part of the brain that is the predator, that is overstimulated, that is go, go, go. Basically the part of the dog that has behavioral issues, lack of impulse control, and won't listen. If your dog is good enough, you can absolutely play fetch with your dog sitting down, but you still have to have all the same rules and every five throws, make sure you stand up, move around with your dog in a down or place, and you can do some let's go work, recall work, heel work around the toys on the ground. Um, that's the, the next thing that would be layered on in Lucy's life. Again, layer on challenges but it's, it's super important that you mix it up, but it doesn't mean you can't just sit down and play fetch, but there are still rules, <laughs> as you can tell. She's not allowed to go from my hand, things like that. All right, now's my favorite part, the enough or all done. Those are the two words I tend to use. You can use uh, anything you want, you know, no more play, no play, you know, whatever, whatever you want to signify, things are done. So first thing I did is, did you see me step into her and make her give space? So I just say enough, you know, move into her, pause for a second, and then pick up the toy, and she's not allowed to go for the toy. See, see how I moved into her again when she ate up space, and then put the toy down. And she's really good at figuring this out to come and lay down next to me calmly. Once your dog has settled, if you want to give them affection, you can. For Lucy, it definitely worked really well. She calmed down even more. But if she had heard a noise or alerted for any reason with her ears, affection goes away and we just focus on chilling out together. In the beginning stages though, no affection and you do blocking to settle the dog down. So she's getting, when she's not told what to do, she gets very bitey, she picks things up, she wanders. So all I'm doing is blocking and then relaxing, telling her what I don't want her to do. She just picks things up off the ground, goes after grass. And then when she pauses, I shift my weight to the side and I relax. And then if she gets up again, not just like gets up to wander away and lay down, but seeks something out, which could be walking through the grass, walking through the yard, picking stuff up. I use body language again to calm her down. And then we just chill out for a few minutes. I went back to affection to see how it affected her. If it had excited her, I would have stopped. My hands move very calmly, slowly, like a massage. But she definitely had this calm part down. She did so good after just a few days of practicing it to where it kind of seemed like she came to enjoy that part of it, which was pretty cool. And then we go back in calmly. She's too much crowding the door, too much, uh, too little space. So I stepped in and we walk in the house together. If she had zoomed in the house, I would have had her turn around. We would have went right back outside. I would have grabbed a leash if I had needed to. So she walks through thresholds. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video really informative. I really enjoyed shooting it with Lucy.